But it was beautiful what Marcy had done in this pamphlet. It was exquisite. And I'll just read you just a few parts. He said, Enlightenment is not a hypnotic state of self-delusion or self-denial. The state of enlightenment represents the ultimate development of what we ordinarily consider to be the most valuable qualities of life. Very a beautiful definition of enlightenment. It is something real, natural, and tangible, and developed systematically in a continuous and progressive manner on the basis of neurophysiological refinement or purification. And this is the main point I just wanted to make, because no one ever had defined enlightenment that way in the world. That was Maharishi's genius, to first of all encourage scientific research. And this, we now understand on a neurophysiological basis that everything we do, right now you're hearing this lecture, neurons are changing in your brain. It's dynamic, our brain. It's not hardwired. It's constantly changed by experience but we've never had that experience of transcending before. Suddenly, Maharishi introduces the experience of transcending, boom, right away. And you could see, for me, doing the research in the early days was easy because I could take beginners in and instantly you'd see these beautiful changes, nice, lovely alpha waves in the frontal part of their brain, all kinds of changes in their physiology from biochemical changes, oxygen consumption, and so forth. And I submitted my first paper before I was, even had my PhD. A graduate student said to me, well, you know, why don't you just publish this? I said, well, I haven't even done my thesis yet. I mean, I've just done this preliminary research. He said, no, no, it's fine. You can publish it in this magazine. Turns out that magazine, Science, is a magazine that <laughs> any scientist in their lifetime, if they even got close to it, would be happy. I had no idea. Didn't have my PhD, submitted this article, and the, the article is so snobby that they wouldn't even put your credentials. They'd just put where you were from. So fortunately, nobody knew. I was still a PhD student, you know. <laughs> so this is how it happened, very innocently, very simply, based on Marshi changing the attitude for how we evaluate meditation. Not only giving us an incredible technique, but changing the whole paradigm of how we approach meditation. And he, instead of shifting the paradigm completely, he brought out a means by which we can include it in the present paradigm. We could understand meditation in a very mechanistic way. We have an experience of transcending. It's a new experience. The brain responds to a new experience, changes the brain. We see these changes in the um, EEG instantly. They happen when we're meditating.